10, 2020. At this time, I will call the meeting to order. The board consists of five members and two alternates, the alternates taking full part in the discussions and becoming a voting member in the absence of a member or when a member abstains for conflict of interest. Uh, present tonight are members, uh, Ms. Lisa Carson, uh, Mr. John Goodekunst, and Mr. Joe Cross, Ms. Kay Towsley, and our alternate member is Mr. Robert Dilak. I am John Golzi, the chair. Also present, we have a zoning administrator, Mr. David Riggs, and secretary, uh, Ms. Carrie Yake, and also the folks from the uh, government channel. Uh, the board operates according to the following procedure. And the chair will name and describe the case uh, the zoning administrator or secretary will state the basis of the objection and any applicable facts or conditions pertaining to the case. The appellant or the representative will give reason why the appeal should be viewed favorably. Anyone wishing to speak in favor of the request will be heard. Anyone wishing to speak in general comment will be heard and anyone wishing to speak in opposition will be heard. If necessary, the appellant or the representative will offer concluding summary or rebuttal remarks. Testimony from the floor shall be closed. The board will deliberate and render a decision. According to Athens City Code Section 230703B, the board has power to grant variances from the strict application of the code, provided the variance will not be contrary to the public interest, the spirit of the code is observed, public safety and welfare are secured, and substantial justice is done. According to Athens City Code Section 230710C, variances from the code shall not be granted unless the board makes a specific findings of fact based directly on the particular evidence presented to it that the standards and conditions imposed in this title, if applicable, have been met by the applicant. The six criteria are, I'm just going to read the titles and we'll discuss them later when we go through the cases. Exceptional circumstances, a practical difficulty and undue hardship, preservation of equal property rights, minimum variance, absence of detriment, and not being a general nature. Any person, resident or officer, department or appointed body of the city of Athens aggrieved by a decision of the board may petition the Athens County Court of Common Pleas concerning the illegality of the decision. Such petition must be filed within 30 days after the mailing of the decision of the board to the applicant. Uh, there are five cases on tonight's agenda. Uh, case 20-10V, the property at 748 East State Street will be heard first, followed by case 20-11V, 14 and 14 and a half Morris Avenue. And at the same time, we'll be discussing case 2012V, the property at 145 East State Street. The next case would be 2013C, one and five North Congress Street. And the last case would be case 20-14V, the property at 286 West Union Street. The board is required to take testimony under oath. Due to the nature of this virtual meeting, uh, please unmute your microphones and respond. Um, and that, a statement would be, do you swear or affirm that any testimony you will present to the board will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? 
study. Okay. We are under the assumption that anyone who will be testifying tonight, aside from the officers, is under oath. Okay. Case number one is case 20-10V. The property is at 748 East State Street. The zone is B3, and Mr. Mark Scott is the appellant. Appellant is requesting a variance from ACC 230407A3 to allow a drive through carryout slash retail store within 70 feet from an R1 zone where 200 feet is required. Um, from the code office, uh, Mr. Riggs, do you have any comments for this case? Or? Good evening, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Uh, we looked at this uh, uh, application that came in, and as you said, uh, uh, even though it's in an R or it's in a B3 business zone, that would typically be permitted. But if you look at Title 2304.07A3, it says that drive-ins, drive-throughs, eating and drinking establishments, the principal building must be at least 200 feet from any R1 or R2 zone, and it doesn't meet that in this case. Okay. Um, I recall we had a case uh, about maybe a year ago, and uh, um, Ms. K uh, and our secretary was kind enough to uh, to find the cases. Uh, it was 284 East State Street, and they were looking for a – it wasn't exactly a drive through It was a window pickup, and that case was denied. Um, so that's all the comments I have. Any questions for the code office? From the members. Uh, point of clarification, um, you did say, uh, Mr. Riggs, that uh, within a 200 feet within a R1 or R2 zone, because there is, it is an R2 zone we're talking about here, if you look at the zoning map. Just want to make sure that's correct because the yes, sir, Mr. Zulak, that is an R1 or an R2 zone is defined in that file. Okay. Any other questions? Can everyone take their un, uh, mutes off if they're not speaking, please? I'm getting a lot of flack here. Yeah. Thank you. I'm getting a little bit too. Okay. I have a question. Yes, go ahead. Um, as described, it says a uh, drive-through and retail, and I wonder is is the objection that we've had some letters objecting to this project? Um, is it the drive-through that they're objecting to? Are they objecting to the whole thing? Would it be possible to allow the retail store without the drive-through? I don't. I'm not. I guess maybe the um, appellant can clarify what options he's interested in. Okay. Uh, any other questions before we go to Mr. Mark Scott? Mr. Scott, are you there? Yes, uh, can you hear me? Yes, we can. You are on the road, yeah. so please go ahead and uh, um, state your case. Is actually, uh, this is not Mark Scott. This is Phil Lee. I'm the attorney representing the appellant in this request. Okay. And I, I just want to clarify that the only issue with the zoning, as I understand it, is that we, we have an approved use for the drive through and retail at this location. The problem is that in addition to the zoning classification of B3, if it is a drive through, it adds an additional footage requirement in the separation to an R1, R2 district. And in this case, it's a 200 foot separation. In the application, it states that the distance from our property to the adjoining property is 70 feet. I'm not sure exactly where that number came from. The distance from the rear of the building 
and we are talking about the um, the uh, Porter Automotive Building there on East State. From the rear of the building to the fence, the privacy fence that separates the residential area from the commercial area is actually 95 feet, not 70 feet. Um, so if that's the distance, um, I'd like to make that correction. And just to address the one question that was, was put forth uh, by the participant, it isn't an issue with the use right now. It's really only that distance separation. And that distance separation of 200 feet does not exist for any of the adjoining properties. Now, of course, it may not apply to all of them either because the 200 foot is only applicable to a drive through It's a special requirement. I'm not actually sure why that requirement is in the code. Uh, there, there may be a logical explanation for it. I'm not sure. Um, but the separation distance for some of the other properties nearby are 46 feet, 72 feet, and 107 feet um on the adjoining properties to commercial areas so it's not unique and in fact the variance or a variance has been in place for quite some time for the property however the change of use requires us to come in and get a new variance to replace the old one um, due to that request so I, I just wanted to clarify that for now Okay, uh, Mr. Riggs, any comments on that? Uh, no, uh, it could, it's possible that we were measuring from the property line instead of the building. It is the it is the distance from the building, principal building, to the nearest R one or R two zone. So that twenty feet uh, could be the difference that that, uh, that is being indicated there would also try to clarify this, that this is any eating or drinking establishment, any drive-in or any drive-through needs to be at least 200 feet from any R1 or R2 zone. So it's not just the drive-ins and drive-through. It's a, If it's an eating or drinking establishment, that also needs to be at least 200 feet from any R1 or R2 zone. So we could consider maybe instead of 70, 90 or 95 feet, it still is less than 200. Uh, the other thing that I saw was the entire operation must be enclosed in one building, right? It has to be all enclosed, except for if you have a gas station. Yeah, that's typical for almost every business that uh, it has to be entirely enclosed. Okay. Uh, uh, the operations have to be entirely enclosed in a building. Yes. Okay. Uh, would you like to add anything more? Uh, yes, this is Phil Lee again uh, for the appellant. And there was a small sketch included with our application that shows the general layout of the entrance and exit. And the way this drive through has been designed, it will be fully enclosed. There's there are not going to be any transactions or any business taking place outside of the building. Um, there will be an entrance, cars pull into the building, then they come out a completely separate entrance. Um, very, there will be, the way it's arranged, you know, headlights won't be pointing up the road towards the residential area. They'll be aiming inside the building or directly at another commercial building um, across the street. So there will be virtually no disruption to the adjoining areas. In fact, I would imagine it would be considerably less disruption to the adjoining residential areas because it, it, it's not automotive repair as it has been in the past. It will be strictly retail. Uh, there will be no hazardous substances, dangerous materials such as used oil solvents, anything like that being used. Be a very clean operation. Um, and just to follow up on uh, what Mr. Riggs said about the eating establishments, how they were also subject to this 200-foot restriction, 
uh, one of the uh, dimensions that I gave you previously was for the Seoul restaurant, which is located, I think it is approximately three, it's, it's either two or three buildings to the west of the applicant's building. And their separation from the back of their building to the R1 zone is 72 feet. Um, so where ours will be actually 95, there's a 72. Um, so I, I don't think it's an unreasonable distance at all. There will be no business conducted in that area. Um, so I don't think it's going to present any, any sort of problems whatsoever for the residential area. And there is a six foot privacy fence back there as well. Thank you. John, I don't know if we're. John, you're muted. What about now? Not now. Okay, I think it's noise coming from my microphone. But um, I got a couple uh, quick questions. Uh, and first of all, let's go to the board members if they have any questions. Uh, I have a question. Uh, go ahead, John. That's a. The big, the big thing on a lot of these letters of complaint uh, or, or, or skepticism about this is the traffic. I, I lived in that neighborhood, and it, there's no way you can take a left-hand turn on East State Street from any of those non-lighted streets whatsoever. So people are going to be relegated to, as soon as they pick their stuff up, they're going to go down the street, turn left or turn right to, to hit a, another street. A lot, of, uh, a lot of the residents are concerned about that. I don't know as Board of Zoning Appeals if that we should deal with that or um, uh, or or what. But I was wondered uh, was there there's a lot of parking space between those that ninety some odd feet. Uh, will you have parking there, sir? Um, this is Phil Lee again. Mr. Lee, yeah, I, yeah. I I don't anticipate much if any parking because it will for the most part be a drive-through uh there there won't be walk-up shopping there um and mr riggs may have more to say about the the parking issue but the only thing i can say is that i, I certainly understand it, you know, the frustration probably that the, the neighbors uh, and that neighborhood they feel about the traffic. I too live in an area that is very high traffic adjacent to a commercial area. It can get frustrating, but it is a commercial area and it is zoned commercial. So no matter what type of business goes in there, it's going to generate traffic. Um, and it is an approved use. The 200 foot setback, which is the issue here, it has no impact whatsoever on the traffic. Uh, the traffic is, is going to be what it is. I, I don't know if there's a way to direct traffic, uh, I, I don't know, behind the building, another direction, or what to alleviate that. That is, um, you know, beyond what I can address. Um, it's just it is one of those situations where that close to a major commercial area there is going to be a traffic issue. I don't think this type of business is going to generate so much traffic that there's really going to be a noticeable difference. I, I, it's, it's more of a convenience type thing. So I don't think it's going to be drawing people in from a long distance, to get the products that we will be selling. I hope that kind of answers your questions. Uh, speaking of the products, uh, it says food and drinks. Is that includes alcohol? And what kind of a food we'll be selling in here? Chips and dips? and uh, well, that, That's the sort of thing, convenience foods. And um, it, alcohol is anticipated if the liquor license is obtained, of course. Um, and, you know, subject to all the restrictions that go along with whatever type of license is obtained. It will not be for any on-premises consumption. 
it will be all carry out. So uh, that would not be an issue. Uh, I guess traffic was discussed quite a bit. Um, um, do you foresee any, like, maybe a line forming in there, cars trying to get in and uh, being in a street? It, do you foresee any of that possibility? It's, I mean, I, I have seen many other drive through operations, and it's very rare to get much of a line. I can't imagine such a thing would occur. I suppose it's always possible, but there is a significant amount of space for for vehicles to line up to get in and, and through the drive through And we would be willing to discuss that uh, with zoning to see if they had any other suggestions for the arrangement um, of the entrance and exit uh, to possibly alleviate that if that becomes an issue. Okay. Any other questions for the appellant? Well, Mr. Lee, we may come back to you. You would have a chance to rebuttal uh, once we hear from the other people. Uh, Great, thank you. Okay. Is there anyone wishing to speak in favor of the request? And if you are online, you may unmute yourself and speak. Um, we don't have any email or letters on behalf of the, in favor of the uh, variance. Anyone wishing to speak in general comment will be heard now. All right, John, I have a couple people in queue here and I'll just go to the top of the list and let them into the meetings. Just give me a okay. second. Thank you, Scott. like a carter has been let into the meeting and they can uh, speak in favor and opposition or in general comment it's your turn to speak please okay uh, can you hear me please yes. state your name and your address amy carter six avon place okay go ahead i'm in opposition of this you are bringing oh. in another business to a street that has tons of children and families on it you want to bring in a carry out that eventually will probably will have beer. That is the last thing the East end of Athens needs. You have kids that walk a street to the rec center. You have kids that walk across the street to the pool. You're going to create a big mess down there. You're, they've already been down citing for lights that are going to light up the place, which is going to light up my house. Okay, thank you. Is there anything more you would like to add or any and questions? Can I get clarification of the exact address? Because that's kind of in question at the moment. Okay, the address I have is 748 East State Street. And uh, the appellant or the code office can maybe make it more specific. I, I believe okay. that is correct. Okay, my understanding is the building on at 750 East State Street. Actually, it I think the building may say 748 on it. If you go on the auditor's website and pull up the GIS information, it says 748 48 shows up in the wrong location. I'm not sure which is accurate. But I, okay. I understand your confusion. I ran into the same problem. It is. But we the, need that fixed. Well, you, it you is, can't have two addresses out here. Well, I, I can't fix the address. That's the post office. Um, well, but, but the issue is that uh, it is the large Don Porter structure on the corner of Avon and East State, the one that is currently vacant. That that is the building. Uh, but we will look into uh, correcting that to make sure that there is no further confusion because um, I noticed the same thing that there, there was some conflict there. Okay. Uh, 
Um, what are the hours of the, this operation going to be? Is it, is it going to be seven days a week, 24 hours a day? Are we talking open till midnight? Um, you know, this is, this is families down here. We don't want people out at midnight up and down our road going to get their beer, their drinks, or whatever. So you need to take into consideration your families that have lived down there for many, many years, and you just want to come in and just make total chaos. It's not right. And I'm totally against it. You're going to degrade the property value down there and everything. Uh, sorry to quickly interrupt you. I just wanted to ask uh, Scott if you could please uh, bring up 748 East State Street on the Google map so we have a visual to talk about. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, you go ahead and uh, continue while he's okay. doing that. Okay. There's just too much at stake here. That is just not right. right. I mean, the little kids that ride their bikes up and down the road, there's always been, you know, businesses there, but they've been very quiet. Um, you know, it's a Monday through Friday, eight to four. That's it. Mr. Lee would like to respond to that in terms of the hours of operation. Okay. Sure. Okay. To, the, to, to the best I can, um, at this point, I don't know if hours have been fixed. I can only anticipate or expect that it would probably be seven days a week, and you are correct. It would probably be uh, late into the evening. I don't know the exact hours. Now, as, as far as your comment regarding lighting, there are obviously code restrictions on lighting and um, overspill as far as the lighting. Measures would have to be taken to make sure that the lights do not shine directly into residential properties um, and illuminate them, you know, late into the evening. That That is something that can be addressed and taken care of, um, and, and it would be. The, okay. I, I understand, and I and I do understand your concerns um, about disruption and. Right. I mean, you know, you have families like with that. kids that need to go to school, and you've got ten o'clock at night. Ten people down here. They're going to honk their horn. They're getting their beer. They're going to go party. That's not right. I just don't understand what you think is right about this whole project. Well, it's. Uh, you know, I guess maybe you don't have fact, children or ahead. anything like that. But you're coming into a residential area. Okay, I, and you can't I answer, you know, the hours just no. And like I said, Columbia Gas has already been down there marking. So, you know, they're moving forward. Mr. Lee, has, has do you guys know, do you have any idea of the hours at all? I mean, this meeting well, is scheduled like for I a said, while now. And you, well, like I said, you I, thought you'd be asked that question? I have not been involved in the planning for the business itself um then what have you I been have involved in if you haven't been involved in any of the the planning of it then what are you involved can in? i answer your question yes go ahead can i answer your question yes um i'd appreciate yes. an opportunity to respond um i am representing the applicant on the zoning application and that is it i am not a business partner I am not involved with the planning of the business. Therefore, there are some things I may not have an answer to, but I can suggest that as a carry out, you are correct. It is probably going to be seven days a week, late into the evening. Um, probably, I think right now what has been looked at, and I just got a text from one of the business people, that they're looking at 10 to 10 p.m. or 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. And, you know, the simple fact is that all of all of East State Street is busy. It all draws traffic all hours of the night. Yeah, I was going to say, I've, I've, I've been there forever. I understand that. But we're talking about the street that I live on now. I'm not talking about East State Street. I'm talking about Avon, where I live. You're going to have delivery trucks in and out now. You know, it's, I, I'm sorry, I'm totally against this. 
And I hope okay. everybody I, else that's listening is too, because you're going, I, you're coming into a residential neighborhood. Well, ma'am, we're not. We're coming into a commercial neighborhood that is zoned commercial and the use requested is permitted. Um, it has been commercial since practically 1900. Um, in fact, the building itself was 1924. So it is, it is 100% a commercial neighborhood. Now we're going to have everything we can to address the concerns of the neighbors and try to eliminate um, any adverse impacts to them. Um, but the fact is it is a commercial district and it, you know, we, we will do what we can to, you know, address your concerns. Um, you know, Other and all traffic that, will be diverted onto Avon too, the way you want to come in and come out. You know, I don't know why you couldn't come in and, and come out on the back side of the building, um, something like that. But, you know, I'm totally against it. You've, you've got, there's too many, there's just too much of a risk down there. And I think it would be just poor judgment if someone did this and let it go through. Um, Ma'am, I have a question for you. Uh, sure. When this when this place was a car dealership and uh, there was some service area, uh, how was the traffic and how was the situation then? It was pretty calm. People would drop their cars off. Um, and usually when they left, they turned out of the dealership and turned right onto East State Street. They did not come up Avon. They didn't have a reason to. Okay. But but we're talking 20, maybe, maybe 20, 30 cars. That's it. Right. Right. You know, we're going to talk, you know, we could be talking hundreds of cars. You know, we went from just a small amount, you know, and maybe once every two, three, four days, a wrecker would come in and drop a car off, you know? So that's the, that's the biggest truck that would come through there. So the picture you know, on the they, screen uh, is what is uh, the proposed entrance to the uh, drive-through or carry-out? That's the front. Of the that's area. the front of the building. Oh, yeah, that's the front of the building. Yeah, you that's what, and it says seven fifty on it. That's seven fifty. Yeah, that's a seven fifty. Okay. <laughs> that's in uh, question as well. I mean, yeah, you don't the right address. It's clearly marked. <laughs> You, uh, you can't go to the Avon Street or Avon Avenue, huh? Uh, that's okay, Scott. Um, okay, thank you, ma'am. Uh, let's uh, hear from some other, if anyone can else. I, can I add, <laughs> I'm sorry, John, can I add something? Sure. Um, yeah, I did uh, hear from um, one of the business personnel working on the project and there is a possibility, and this is something we can consider that was not in the initial plans, but um, in response to Ms. Carter's comments, I'm sorry, I hope I have the name correct. Um, we may be able, and this would have to take the coordination of uh, the zoning and perhaps traffic as well, we may be able to direct exiting traffic to take the alley that goes behind the building um, to exit that direction. Um, because my clients will own those other structures as well. And we may be able to direct them that way. That's an option, something that could be explored. Um, again, it would take some, take some looking into and some planning um, with some other entities, but, it, you know, it's something we can definitely consider and look into. If that's I think the you're case, on yeah, if that's the case, then uh, we probably have to meet some other time. Uh, for time being, uh, let's hear from, is there anyone else online who would like to speak in opposition of this? Otherwise, we're going to read the... I'm moving in a, a, a C. Riley to speak. Okay. Uh, please unmute yourself. Uh, state your name and address for the records. C. Riley, you can go ahead and start speaking whenever you'd like. 
Uh, she's muted. Okay. 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 Okay, the noise of delivery trucks, trucks, you know, is too much for children in the neighborhood. The first house has two little kids under five there. Um, the selling of alcohol in the future. We already have alcohol at the Seoul restaurant. We don't need this. Um, exit should be out. Try Grand Park then. Cut through the alley there. But And on Avon is also Sells Park. We have a lot of traffic going up to Sells Park, which is great. But this is just too much. This is a family neighborhood. The noise, the traffic delivering is is beyond reason if you get that in there. Um, you know, this is not good for our neighborhood. Please consider and vote against this. I have talked to the neighborhoods. They're writing letters. They're very upset. Um, Jan Cunningham. Um, well, I shouldn't use people names, but they're all really upset about this situation. So please do not agree to have this in our neighborhood. This is a family neighborhood. It's going to degrade it. Property value is going to go down. And who wants this through our, you know, it's terrible. They can buy their alcohol at Kroger's. We're, there's enough convenience stores. We don't need this. The car lot was great. We had no problems. We've lived there 40 some years. And this is nothing but a nightmare. Uh, Ma'am, would you please, uh, you may have done this before, but I didn't hear it. Uh, state your name and your address for the record. Carolyn Riley, 8 Avon Place. And it's too close to my property to have all this drive-through coming out, going up Avon Place. Okay, thank you. Any questions for the witness? All right. Um, all right. Uh, Ryan, do we have anyone else? We, we have a Don E. Rootsafter that I am allowing in next. Mute. Okay, I'm unmuted. Thank you. I appreciate this. I want to speak up about... Uh, uh, please just state your uh, address for us. My address is the Work Shafter Law Office, 6998 State Route 329, Guysville, Ohio. I am speaking on my own behalf tonight. Okay. But I'm speaking on behalf of all the property in East State Street, that if you put this handcuff on the property in East State Street, it will be applied totally unfairly. I'm concerned that the first time some nice chain restaurant wants to come in and take one of these business properties on East State Street and the code being, you know, somewhere in the process that they're just going to get it because it's just, you know, if you're going to do this here and keep this business from using the property in its present footprint, then I don't know how you're going to not let other businesses with far less setback than this go forward. I'm thinking about, and this is many years ago, how that Super America station or whatever it's called, Speedway station was put in there right in a neighborhood. And I stood to object to that. But, but this is way back from there. And considering all of the compressors and all of the toxics that were there in that paint room and all of the hammering and the noise and the frames being bent and the trucks coming in all hours of the night with the wrecks to drop off, this is going to be far less impact on that neighborhood. And it's going to actually get the buildings cleaned up. Thank you. Thank you. Um, do we have any more? I have a Nancy Walker that I'll allow into next. Okay, great. Please state your name and address and unmute yourself, please. Uh, Nancy Walker, please unmute yourself. Thank you. Uh, Nancy, it's your turn to speak. You can go ahead and unmute yourself. And okay, I, it just appeared on my screen. It just appeared on my screen. Yeah, your address. I, I, my name is address. Nancy Walker, and I and I live at uh, 13 Avon Place. And I agree with uh, uh, Carolyn Riley and Ms. Carter that traffic is a problem in the area. Uh, we um, have Sells Park, uh, which is a, a big attraction. 
and uh, this will add to that that we've all lived with the uh, with the work that was being done at Mark Porter's uh, and before that the Chevrolet place so that it was not something that had any effect on us uh, in any big way because people came in and and left uh, mostly on State Street um, and there were uh, very few people it wasn't like a, a large number of people coming through so this is not the same. I think the man who spoke previously probably doesn't live here, so he doesn't know what the experience has been like. We haven't had a problem before. We're facing it now. So we'd like you to uh, consider the fact that you're asking for a variance that should, according to what I understood of the rules you gave before, benefit the people or be of, be of benefit to the community. And, and uh, so if you're going to grant the, the uh, variance, it should be, uh, only because it it benefits the community, and it doesn't. This will not benefit us. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Scott, you said you have one more. I have one more, a Mike C that I'm letting in next. Uh, Mike, please uh, state your name and uh, address for the records and unmute yourself, please. Hi, my name is Mike Goldpoint, Six Avon. I live next door to Carolyn. Um, yeah, I just want to have a few comments. So I'm the house that's closest there to the uh, proposed business. I did just want to say, you know, I I love the community here for the local business and culture we have. I 100% support local business and expansion and new jobs and all that good stuff. But... Um, <clears throat> In listening to some of the comments from the attorney, um, you know, one thing they were talking about was that there wouldn't be any headlights um, issues into the homes coming out of that place. I don't know if they're planning on rebuilding it, but um, I don't know if you can see that. That's my office window looking at the, the door. Those headlights that come out of there, if those guys at Mark Porter's are working after dark, come right into my upstairs bedroom windows and to my office and living room. So they haven't researched that. They're just saying what it takes to get the variance. Um, regarding Soul Restaurant being only 70 feet or whatever, <clears throat> that may be true, but they're also um, not going to bring in 100 cars down my street every day either. Um, I'm reading, I'll take some notes here, bear with me for a second. <clears throat> anyway, um, yeah, the, and as far as like you asked if they could potentially create a, a line or a backup out to State Street, that already happens with the vape shop. I've, I almost get hit every time I try to go out State Street. I don't even want to exit State Street, let alone the people coming out of a, a drive through. Um, <clears throat> And look at Larry's doghouse, you know, the line is backed up out to place every Wednesday, whatever it is for hot dogs. So this can certainly be an issue. Um, and basically in conclusion, you know, th there's a reason you guys know these zoning laws are, are here in the rules. And there's a lot of precedence behind the specifics of the rules and I think it was, was it Nancy, uh, whoever said, you know, this should variance could be applied or granted if it would benefit the community. Yeah, certainly this is not, this is going to be a huge detriment to our neighborhood and the community. Um, I don't really think it can be stressed enough that this is notoriously been in a family neighborhood over here. I have two children, a one-year-old and a five-year-old. The people next to me have grandkids that are there all the time running around. Um, the house two down from them has three kids across the street. There's another kid. I mean, just in the first block of Avon, there's probably 20 kids under 10 years old. And that's just one block. So um, I support the guy on being an entrepreneurial and whatnot, but this neighborhood is not the place for a liquor drive through all hours of the night. May I ask Mike a question? Go ahead. Um, Mike, so does Avon Place have sidewalks? No. Thank you.
Okay. Um, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, Ms. Yake and Joe Karras, if you would like to maybe alternate reading those uh, emails, uh, maybe make it a good summary, not not a brief summary, but maybe a good summary of the, and also mention the names. Yake, Ms. Uh, Carrie, you can go first. And I have an email that I received from John Eckleberry, 64 Avon Place. He also is opposing the variance for the drive through and he spoke about the traffic at the intersection of uh, East State Street and Avon and the vehicle waiting, um, slow speeds. He said this is an unsafe location for additional and erratic car traffic. And he also said there's no need for a drive through or carry out in this area. Um, it's unnecessary because of the abundance of grocery stores, convenience stores along East State Street that already sell beer, wine, liquor, food, and related products. The next letter is from uh, Linda and Gregory Lavelle at 16 Avon Place. It is our understanding that, bo that the board will hear a case tonight regarding an appeal for a variance to allow a drive through to operate within 70 feet of a residential neighborhood when the minimum distance allowed is 200 feet. Our family owns a home on Avon Place. We wish to register our opposition to the granting of this variance. Approval of this variance would result in a detriment to the adjacent residential neighborhood, not only on Avon Place, but on other residential streets in the neighborhood as well. The increased traffic would pose a threat for the many children and seniors in the neighborhood, and the increased noise would have a negative impact on the many citizens in the immediate area. The zoning laws are in place to protect the residential neighborhoods from this type of intrusion and should be upheld in this case. Thank you for your service on the board and your attention to and considering of our concerns. I have one from Rachel Myers. Um, she lives at 61 Avon Place and she's writing to object to the proposed drive through also uh, in her neighborhood, the far east side. She says they live in a quiet family neighborhood and they do not want such an established added to the already undesirable vape shop at the end of the street. Um, she said these stores are an eyesore and draw undesirable traffic to an already difficult intersection. Meanwhile, tarnishing the image of our family neighborhood, just giving people directions to my house has become an embarrassment and where the giant vapor sign is. She asked that we, uh, that you do not grant the variance and please maintain some sense of family atmosphere around here and do not add more undesirable traffic at the very end of Avon and East State Street. Uh, next is Carla Young, 64 Avon Place. Uh, to the members of the Athens City Zoning Board, I am writing to express my concern about the possible variance for Mr. Scott's proposed drive through on East State. As a homeowner on Avon, I'm concerned that there doesn't seem to be a plan to get shoppers back onto East State Street. Avon does not have a traffic light. There are existing problems with traffic directed through our neighborhood from East State Street car dealerships. How does this fit with city planners' future plans for East State and the Far East Side community? As one of the gateways to Athens, it would be nice if East State Street didn't look like a giant strip mall. That is from Ms. Young. I have uh, an email from Jan Hodson at 45 Graham Drive. And she said, I write with concern about the possible granting of this variance. I ask that the zoning board please think about why the current law requires there be 200 feet from an R1 neighborhood for a business. The city planner has assured us verbally and through his draft comprehensive plan that there is a sincere desire to protect neighborhood life in the city of Athens. Allowing this variance would certainly fly in the face of that. Avon Place is a narrow street. Uh, that has experienced an increase in number of cars speeding up and down from Sells Park and running stop signs as they do so. Avon Place is a street that sees many pedestrians and children playing. Uh, the business plans to put its entrance and exit onto Avon Place. There is no stoplight at the corner of East State and Avon Place. Uh, 
See if drivers exit the planned business onto Avon and want to go east on East State Street, they will never be able to safely make a left turn. Uh, the board of the Far East Neighborhood Association has not taken an official stance on this variance because we only learned about it yesterday. However, we have spent several years observing the traffic patterns in our neighborhood and we have been concerned. We've expressed our concerns to the city council, the mayor, the city planner, and the chief of police. If you grant this variance, we believe it will only worsen the present problem. Okay. Um, did, we, did you read Anna Longo? Carrie or no? I did not. Okay. Anna Longo from 22 Eden Place uh, wrote, I oppose the requested variance for the old Mark Porter building at Avon and East State. It will increase the traffic on Jacobs and either Eden or Charles because customers will not be able to easily make a left turn on East State. This is a residential neighborhood with small children and older residents who like to walk, and there aren't any sidewalks, which will make it very dangerous for the walkers. There are at least two thirds food, snack, and beverage options. I'm sorry, there are at least two or three food, snack, and beverage options within a quarter mile. All of these options have easy in or out entrances with traffic lights. I have an email from Joan and Steve Saffron. Um, she would like to express her concern um, about our consideration of granting the variance to Mark Scott to open a drive through. She said her understanding is that all businesses have to be 200 feet from the R1 neighborhood. This is almost two thirds less than the required distance. There is a reason for this law to keep commercial traffic to a minimum in an R1 neighborhood. Since the plans for the store show the drive through entrance and exit to be located on Avon Place, there is no doubt there will be significantly more traffic through Avon and Jacobs, where there is already serious speeding problems to get to a light to allow cars to make a left turn onto State Street. This is a neighborhood filled with children and pedestrians. Any increase in our already stressed cut through traffic pattern will result in a more dangerous situation for our residents. I urge you to not grant this variance. That's all we have. Thank you very no, much. Oh, you I have one we, more? I think we had Emily Bentley. Did we read Emily Bentley? I did not. We got one more, John, because there, uh, there was that eighth one we received. Okay. Um, from Emily Bentley, I wanted to voice my concern as a Far East Side resident, uh, owner of 27 Pleasant View Drive, and parent uh, about the plans of the drive through variance on Avon. As an avid daily walker in the Far East Side with my family, we already experience traffic on Jacobs that disregards the speed limit and often disregards stop signs. My fear with this plan is that without a light on Avon and East State, cars from the new establishment will use Jacobs to make their way to Charles and or Eden and add to this issue. Given the city's new language about preserving our neighborhoods, I'd like to see the city respect the current guidelines that require 200 feet between businesses and residential areas, as well as consider plan for this traffic issue. Th thank you, Emily Bentley. Well, thank you, Joe, and thank you, Carrie. You two should uh, do the evening news in Athens. <laughs> I tried to read all the short ones. I gave her the long ones. <laughs> um, okay, Mr. Phil uh, Lee. Uh, what we have to be looking in here is uh, hardship. Um, what is, the, is the, the current structure can be used, I'm sure, for uh, many similar, uh, you know, uses as before. So what is the hardship that in here that you can argue? It, um, basically that... The size of the building limits its use, uh, practical use anyway. Um, the size and actually where it is on a corner, obviously a auto dealership with automotive repair worked well there. There aren't a lot of other businesses that could use that amount of square footage, that type of building in that location. Um, so 
it, it kind of limits the use for that area. Um, you know, it is a B3 zone. However, to try to use the existing structure and existing buildings to make it e economical to put a new business in there and create some jobs, it, you know, we would have to have some concessions. And by concessions, I mean a variance. Um, and it, again, not an unusual variance, one that has historically been granted to many other businesses up and down East State Street. Um, so I think that addresses your first question regarding the practical difficulty. Okay, and then uh, also I would like to ask you to address all those letters that were read into the records or anything that you want to rebuttal. Sure. Just a couple of things. And first of all, I, I don't want any of the residents to misinterpret my comments to sound like I, I don't understand their plight and, um, you know, and that, you know, the business owners don't care about their situation. You know, we perfectly understand the traffic is a problem. Uh, the speed of the cars is a problem. Safety of the children is paramount. I understand that it's it's hard to maintain the residential character of a neighborhood adjacent to a very busy B3 commercial thoroughfare. Um, but unfortunately, that is the layout of the area. And I, it would, you know, take a lot to completely change the character of the neighborhood. That being said, some of the comments, one was regarding delivery trucks, the noise from delivery trucks, and there would be no deliveries after 5 p.m. Deliveries would be 10 to 5. There are um, current plans call for actually two lanes of traffic inside the building. And the reasoning is that would help to eliminate the potential for backed up traffic outside the building. Not to say that on occasion, there aren't going to be lines. It's probably going to happen occasionally. But the two lanes of traffic inside the building would certainly help to minimize that. And one other comment um, regarding the headlight and the, and the lights I know there are some lights there currently that are a problem. And I know in the final design and the improvements for the building, we would definitely look at the light pollution and minimize any impact we can to the adjoining properties. The auto headlights, and, and I know, um, I think it was Mike commented about the lights shining into his office and in his house. And I think I spoke to Mike today out there. But, um, I mean, definitely that's something we're going to have to look at. I'm not sure if there's a practical way to deal with, with the momentary, you know, headlights shining into his house from that location. There may be a way. I'm not sure. We, we would just certainly look at it and take it into consideration. Uh, some Many of the comments from the neighbors dealt with traffic um, and speeding. And many of you mentioned Sells Park being a major attraction. I understand that. Uh, I go to Sells Park myself, take my dogs there all the time. I understand. I live on a road that leads to Stroud's Run. I get the same thing. People going up and down the street all the time ahead of Stroud's Run. That has nothing to do with putting a drive through in this location. Um, it's unfortunate that those traffic problems are occurring, speeding is occurring, but that has nothing to do with the drive through. The drive through is a permitted use. The use of the property is not what is at issue here, and it's not what's before the board. Um, it's, it's not even a question. What is the question 
is whether or not a variance from 200 feet set back to what is in reality a 95 foot setback is reasonable and the fact is whether it's 95 feet or 200 feet will have no impact whatsoever on the traffic it won't matter but what it does permit and I, i've talked this over a little bit um with the owners by text while this meeting is going on is they have purchased the additional um, Don Porter buildings, all the buildings there on that block, basically, um, because that whole business is going to be gone. So you're going to have a bunch of empty buildings sitting there falling apart if businesses are not allowed to move in there. Um, if you want to fight every business that tries to move in there, we're going to sit and watch these buildings fall to ruin on East State Street. But here we have local business owners who are trying to start a new business, put people to work. And with that additional footage back there that we do have, the 95 foot, and also access to that alley, the owners have indicated to me that they are willing to explore redesigning the layout of the carryout so that the exit goes into the alley and you know talk to traffic and also zoning about ways to force or direct traffic down the alley to the other street i, I right off the top of my head i don't know the name of the other street but where there is a traffic light for them to exit i mean that is is not a problem I have no objection to doing that um and it, apparently it is an, a private alley, not a public alley. And we would own that alley, so uh, we should be able to do that and have no objections to doing that if uh, the BZA wants to make that a condition to approval. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, I'd like to ask my colleagues if they have any questions for the appellant. Otherwise, we are going to close the floor for discussions. John, and, somebody else who did raise their hand. I don't know if you're still taking questions from the floor or comments. Uh, maybe one more. I, mean, I want to make sure that everybody gets enough a chance to speak tonight on All this right. case. It looks like they just lowered their hand. That was um, uh, Nancy Walker. I had okay. a, uh, maybe no. Yes. Hold on one second. Well. It keeps switching on me. I'm, I'm, I'll let her in and she can okay. say if she wants to speak or not. Is she muted or? The main um, compromise was uh, to use the, uh, the the alley and that won't work a street that doesn't have a light so i think the same problem would happen to them they would have more traffic at their on their street and um and in in fact most of the um most of the proposals or most of the objections that uh, that the attorney raised were not relevant because um He's forgetting that um, we live here, <laughs> and we know that uh, the the noise and the or the uh, lights and the and the um, traffic from that drive through is going to be a problem. That corner is difficult. Uh, we have um, not only uh, children, but we have pets, and we have all of us walking the streets because we have no sidewalks. Um, it's just a difficult thing. And I think he needs to uh, to uh, to look further into possible solutions if he wants to go forward with this. But the one he proposed is not going to work. That's all. Thank you.
And I do have one other person that you're still taking. John, unmute. John, you're muted. Uh, what am I doing this? Uh, okay, I guess uh, we're going to close that discussions from the floor because... Uh, excuse me, excuse me, John. Phil Lee again. Can I, can I just ask one question? Well, I was just going to say that you may respond to the last uh, witness. That was it. Um, really, I just want to know if anyone can confirm um, for sure whether or not uh, Grand Park Avenue has a traffic light at East State. I believe it does. Um, and what we were saying is that we could divert the exit to the alley behind our building and direct that traffic down the alley to Grand Park. And as far as I know, or I thought it had a traffic light, maybe it does not. Um, I, I do not know that for sure, but um, we thought it did. Uh, okay, I guess at this point, what we're going to do, we're going to close the discussions from the floor. Um, the couple of choices is that I guess my preference, and we'll uh, just I will consult with the board members to go ahead and uh, take care of this variance. And if there is any changes that you want to bring, that would be another case that you can discuss with the code office. Uh, board members, what do you think? Should we table this for a different time, or should just we just go ahead and uh, uh, complete this case? And then, if they want to have a new proposal, they can come forward later. We should vote on it, John, think, uh, and then they could come back later. Okay, I agree. I agree. Okay, let's discuss the. Oh, uh, Kay, we haven't heard from you. Would you like to make a motion? Or anyone. Kay, you might be muted. We can't hear you, Kay. Joe, you are on. No, I'm, I'm telling Kay we can't hear her. I can't hear Kay. So you are next then. Oh, I'm not speaking. No, no. You don't want to make a motion? Uh, I can make a motion. Go ahead, okay. Lisa. I move that we grant a variance in the case of the property at 748. East State Street, although that's in question, right? The address? I, I could respond to that, uh, uh, John, if that's okay. Sure. Yeah, the, this property is actually located on four parcels. Uh, one is uh, uh, the, the uh, 748, one is uh, 750, and then there are two parcels that are located on Eden Place. Um, so 748 and 750 would actually both uh, be the correct address for this. Okay, uh, for this thank you. This lot. Okay, as to the property at 748 and 750 East State Street, I move that we grant a variance from Athens City Code 230407A3 to allow a drive-through carry-out retail store, carry-out slash retail, within 70 feet from an R1 zone where 200 feet is the required distance. Do we have a second? I'll second it. Thanks, Joe. Exceptional circumstances. Are there any exceptional or extraordinary circumstances or conditions applying to the property in question or to the intended use of the property that do not apply generally to other properties or classes or uses in the same zone? I don't think so. I think when yeah. asked about it, the appellant's representative said that it was mostly an economic issue in terms of what was feasible um, for use of a property that large. Any others? Um, I agree. A practical difficulty and undue hardship because of exceptional or extraordinary circumstances or conditions pertaining to a specific piece of property, the literal enforcement of these regulations will result in practical difficulty or undue hardship 
that is unnecessary to the achievement of the public purposes. I guess we didn't find any exceptional circumstances, so the practical hardship probably would not apply then. No. Okay. Lisa, we see you on the screen, so do you agree, disagree? I agree. Okay. Uh, preservation of equal property rights. Literal interpretation of these regulations would deprive the appellant of rights commonly enjoyed by others in the same zone and the same vicinity, while the granting of the requested variance will not confer on the applicant any special privilege that is denied to other properties in the same zone and the same vicinity. Anyone, anyone who has a comment on that? Well, I, I think the whole thing with it, the address on East State Street is deceptive. It's, it's literally the entrance and the exit are going to be on Avon, okay? Mm -hmm. And that's where these people live. And that's... Yeah, I fully agree with that. And again, there are not that many... Um, those Not meant uh, to be carry outs but... or yeah, carry outs and retail stores in the side the streets. Mm. Okay, minimum variance. Is this the minimum variance? Uh, we had 70 feet, now we agree on 95 feet. We are still short of 105 feet. So I personally I don't think it's minimum, but you folks can add to that. Absence of detriment. The authorizing of such variance will not be of substantial detriment to adjacent property and will not materially impair the purpose of the zoning code or the public interest. I think we had a total of maybe at least 10 people who by email or uh, in person, they expressed their opinion and the possible uh, detriment to the neighborhood. So we just leave it at that unless you have additional, uh, anything that you want to add to it. Not of a general nature, the condition or situation of the specific piece of property or the intended use of the set property for which variance is sought, one or the other, or in combination, is not of so general or recurrent in nature as to make reasonably practicable the formulation of a general regulation for such condition or situation. And any questions on that? Any comment on that? So it's not a general nature. Um, okay, are we ready to vote? I'm gonna start with uh, Lisa since you are on already. I vote no. John has fallen off the, me the meeting, it looks like. John oh. good against. Okay. Uh, Lisa, no. Uh, John good against? Hmm. Okay, let's uh, go to Joe. Heard about a minute ago. Uh, Joe, your vote? I vote no. Who was that? That was Joe. I voted no. Oh, okay. Um, okay. I heard no, so, okay. <laughs> and John Goodikens, are you? We need to get an official vote from him. I will vote no as well. So at this should, moment, we have four no's and one should, we need should, to hear. John, should Rob vote then if uh, John's, John dropped off? Well, John, uh, I don't know whether he's dropped off to permanently or is just a... Um, it's just uh, right now. He's back. He's back. Okay. John, the vote is in your hand. I just hand got now. back. I got back. Just got back. Okay. The, we are voting. Uh, we have four no's, and we are waiting for yours. Uh, no. Okay. Um, Mr. Lee, I'm sorry. You don't have the variance. And uh, again, you're welcome to and make a different proposal and see the code office and then we'll go from there. Okay, thank you very much and I appreciate everybody's comments. Thank you. 
Yes, I also like to thank everybody who attended in person or by email to express their opinion. We're going to go to uh, case number two and then case number three. These are two different addresses, two different structures, but they are adjoining each other. And uh, whatever is going on with this property is going to affect both of them. So we can't have one getting the variance, <clears throat> one being denied. So we're going to read them together and vote together for both of them. Case number 2011V is 14 and 14 and a half Morris Avenue. Zone is R3. And Mr. Trent De Bruin is the appellant. Appellant is requesting a variance from ACC 230311A1 to allow a zero left setback where five feet is required and ACC 231001 table A to allow 44% structure lot coverage where 30% is required and 62% total lot coverage, where 60% is the maximum. Uh, seeking variance to remove existing garage connector, and in addition to the rear of the main house, which is a non-conforming grandfathered rental um, unit, uh, until, or, yeah, unit will be eliminated. Uh, so those items will be eliminated, replacing the existing garage with a new proposed shared unattached two-car garage and adjoining driveways with 145 East State Street uh, would replace two independent garages with the removal of the garage connector in addition, as well as replacing existing front porch with a smaller porch. Both structures lot coverage uh, as well as the total lot coverage will be decreased. And the next case, which is case 2012 V, uh, address 145 East State Street, uh, zone R3. Again, Mr. Trent De Bruin is the appellant. Uh, appellant is requesting a variance from ACC 230311A1 to allow zero rear setback where five feet is required. Uh, seeking variance to replace existing garage with a new uh, proposed shared unattached two-car garage in adjoining driveways with 14 Morris Avenue to replace two independent garages. Um, Mr. Uh, I'm gonna go to the code office, um, David. Uh, it says on the second one, the rear setback of zero where five feet is required. I always thought that the rear setback was like around 40 feet. Uh, let me check that. In this case, I think it's a five foot setback for, uh, for the zone that they're in. Hang on just a second, let me check that, okay? Unless this is an accessory building. That's correct. It is two. We're, what we're talking about is two garages, which are accessory okay. buildings. So it's five feet dislocated. All right. So five Thank feet you. for an accessory structure is what the requirement calls for. And that's okay. 2303.11A1. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you, sir. Um, anything you would like to add? Um, what we've got really is two addresses, 14 Morris and 145 East State Street. And what they are really, uh, to, to boil it down, what they're really trying to do is put two garages together. Uh, so they'll share a wall along the property line. Um, and then they will also share a driveway. Um, the, you, we just can't do that because of the way the code's set up. Um, but it actually makes a lot of sense for this particular structure. Okay, thank you. Uh, meanwhile, Scott, um, I don't wanna risk losing the the my own uh, connection so uh, if you could bring those three maps that we discussed before the meeting uh, you know when when we get there if you could bring it up i'm afraid that i lose my screen then um any questions for the code office from the board members no uh this is rob um 
question if the, these are separate properties but same owner if they were to sell one of the properties would this impede that so the garage is one structure could it be could one property be sold off effectively and not cause a problem with this garage the way it would be rebuilt sure i understand your question and i think that it would be a applicable that they could actually sell that back with the variance because the variance does go with the property as long as the property line is uh, is right on the wall the shared wall between the two garages so yes they could do that okay yeah any other questions well, Mr. De Bruin, um, I'm sorry if I mispronouncing your name. Um, I don't remember exactly how you look like, but I know your signature is very, very distinct. <laughs> Excuse me. Actually, this is uh, Kurt Monko, uh, the property owner of both properties there. Um, it's okay. I'd like to speak on our behalf. Okay. Did you mention your address for... Uh, or we have your address, or do we have? Uh, just please state your address just for the records, because we were expecting Mr. De Bruin. Yes, sure. Uh, Seventy-four on one place. Okay. Okay, go ahead and state your case. Uh, thank you. I appreciate uh, the opportunity to, to hear this case. It is a bit unusual, um, but not so strange for the east side. Uh, 14 Morris Avenue and 14 and a half Morris Avenue are currently non-conforming. Um, for 14 Morris Avenue, we're proposing a single family rental unit. Um, the intent for both of these properties is to add value um, to the property itself and subsequently the community. Um, if you can reference the site plans and the demolition plans, for 14 Morris Avenue, uh, we propose to remove the non-conforming rental unit known as 14 and a half Morris Avenue. Um, we'll also reduce the lot coverage in regards to the buildings uh, by demolishing um, the connector to the house. So there's this uh, very strange uh, connection from the garage to the house. And also in addition to the rear of the main house will be removed and we will reduce the footprint um, of the front porch itself. What we are proposing for both properties is a 12 by 24 garage. So together it would be a 24 by 24 garage. Um, there would be a um, fire rated wall on the property line uh, between the two structures. Um, so each, each uh, property would have a 12 by 24 parking space, which would allow for larger vehicles that we're accustomed to today. Um, currently, uh, if you review the site, um, we have very two very small, um, older garage looking structures that have been converted to what I would call storage buildings and also on, on uh, 14 and a half. Uh, it was actually on, on part of the living structure. They have a, a common uh, gutter that they use that are basically kind of they're old enough and decrepit enough where they're leaning against each other at this point in time. Nonetheless, what we're looking for is nothing more than what I feel our neighbors enjoy on the east side, which is an enclosed, safe, uh, sheltered parking area uh, for each car. Um, just for clarity, we do own both properties, so we are currently encroaching upon ourselves. Uh, we do not object to it in regards to other things. Okay, any questions for the appellant? M Mr. Model, this, this uh, 14 and a half uh, Morris you said it's partly a, a use part of it is used as, as the rental is, is that what i understood because your your microphone wasn't so good i didn't fully understand you sir yeah i apologize um the previous property owner um had a rental permit for 14 and a half um 
when we purchased the property, we fully understood and intend to remove uh, that 14 and a half uh, apartment um, to where this will be a single family uh, property. I understand. Your microphone got no better, sir, but that's okay. Uh, that so so obviously when you redo it when you if you are granted the variance and you get the the building that fourteen and a half element w- would not be part of this at all you're you're simply using it as a garage. Correct. Okay. Sounds okay, good uh, Scott, if you have those uh, maps, uh, the one that is for the proposed map. And again, I don't want to bring it up myself because I may lose it. Okay, very good, excellent. Uh, what is the zero setback that we are talking about in here? I don't see any zero setback. So between the existing buildings, one in this particular display is labeled as three and the other is number one. Um, they basically currently almost have an adjoining wall. There is a little space between them. So. There is no setback between the two properties, between the two uh, buildings there. Um, Scott, if you could bring the one, the proposed map, please, is the third one, is the next one. Yeah, right there. Yeah, right there. That um, I, I just was wondering where that zero setback was in here. Is the garage because it's between the two properties? Correct. It's the distinction between, and it follows the driveways as well. So the driveways would be uh, contiguous uh, as proposed. Okay. Okay. Any any questions? Nope. Okay. No questions. Uh, Is there anyone? um, I don't think we received any email or letters for this. Uh, is there anyone online who would is, uh, who wishes to speak in favor of the request? Will be heard now. Anyone wishing to speak in opposition or in general comment will be heard now. Uh, Ryan, do you see anyone in there that on the list of the participants that might? I don't see anybody raising their hand. Raising their hands. Okay, great. Um, okay, Mr. Uh, sir, do you have any last word that you want to mention before we close the discussions from the floor? Uh, no, thank you. I just appreciate your time. Uh, I understand the process and uh, okay. appreciate what you do. Thank you. All right. Uh, we are looking for a motion. So, John, if I'm going to do the motion, do I just pick either one? Um Good question. I think um, just go ahead and just for the legality, just read them both. Oh, John. Okay. Uh, So for 145 East State Street, case number 20-12V, the appellant is requesting a variance for ACC 230311A1 to allow zero rear setback where five feet is required seeking the variance to replace the existing garage with a new proposed shared unattached two-car garage and adjoining driveway with 14 Morris Avenue to replace two independent garages. Do I say I, I, I wish to grant him a variance? You just did at the very beginning. Oh, crap. Yeah. Okay, that's okay. Uh, and then uh, we also didn't read them in order. Okay, go ahead and do the 11V. Oh, okay. Uh, and for 14 Morris Avenue, case number 20-11V, the appellant is requesting a variance from ACC 230311A1 to allow a zero left setback where five feet is required and ACC 231001 Table A to allow 44% structure lot coverage where 30% is required and 62% total lot coverage where 60% is the maximum, seeking the variance to remove the existing garage, connector, and in addition to the rear of the main house a non-conforming grandfathered rental until uh, will be eliminated, you know, will be eliminated. Replacing the existing garage with a new proposed shared unattached two-car garage and adjoining driveways 
with 145 East State Street would replace two independent garages. With the removal of the garage, the connector and addition, as well as replacing existing front porch with smaller porch, but uh, both structure lot coverage as well as the total lot coverage will be decreased. Now, the second thing would be very easy. I second. One. Okay, John. Yeah, that's easier than what I had to do. Yeah. <laughs> okay, but the second one is the, the ones that counts. Um, okay, let's go through the findings. Um, exceptional circumstances. I think there is a special circumstances for these two properties because they are owned by the same person and they are joining and then they want to share the, um, the garage. And also they are removing a number of uh, structures in there. So uh, that was attractive to me. Mm. Anyone else? I, I agree. Okay. Uh, a practical difficulty and undue hardship uh, again, if you want to satisfy that exceptional circumstances, then you automatically have to satisfy the practical difficulty and undue hardship. Uh, preservation of equal property rights. I don't think we are giving any special privilege to this property uh, than the others in the neighborhood, are we? I don't think so. Okay. Uh, minimum variance, is it minimum variance? Uh, I think the overall structure is uh, under the uh, structure is actually reducing, just decreasing. So uh, in a way, that's good. Absence of detriment, uh, I don't see any. Um, not of a general nature, um, no. Please feel yeah. free to comment if you, anyone has a different view. Are we ready to vote? Well, let's just start with John before we lose him. John? Yes or no? Yes. Yes, I'm okay. sorry. Okay. And uh, Joe? This is, this is the easy part. Yes. This was easier okay. than the reading. Okay. Um, Kay? Okay, if you could open your video, maybe we can just thumb up or down. We can hear you. She says yes. You heard her, huh? No, I just saw her. Okay. She gave a thumbs up. Okay. And then uh, Lisa? Yes. And the easiest part is the last person who goes, John, myself, uh, I vote yes as well. So congratulations, you have the variance and good luck with the building. Now we are going to case number four. Can you guys still hear me? Everything is quiet out there. I can, I can hear you, John. Okay, thank you. Uh, case number 20-13C. And uh, these are the properties at 1 and 5 North Congress Street. Zone is R3. Athens Mental Health Incorporated DBA, the gathering place, is the appellant. Appellant is requesting a conditional use from ACC 230702D. I'm going to stop right now and uh, Mr. Uh, uh, you know, for going back to code office. Uh, I don't think if the conditional use is that what we are doing, we should be temporary use maybe because conditional use is something like a permanent, uh, like a variance, but that Mr. would be... Chair, that's correct. What we're lo really looking for is a temporary dwelling structure permit for 12 months with, with possible extension. Okay, so it should be changed conditional to temporary use. Because conditional would apply the ACC 230702E, and that would be like a permanent, uh, almost permanent uh, variance. But yeah, that's correct. We're we're only looking at. Uh, we, I, I'm actually considering this a uh, like a, a pilot project or a test project. 
Yeah. So we would really want to do a temporary uh, permit here. Okay, so we're going to change the word conditional to temporary. Uh, to allow a temporary structure and use uh, on premises parking lot for a purpose that does not conform to the regulations prescribed in the zoning code for the zone in which it is located. Uh, seeking a temporary permit for a term of no longer than 12 months uh, for a prototype model uh, Conestoga Hut, a micro shelter that provides a person with roughly 60 square feet of lockable, dry, and safe space to temporarily live while working to improve their life situation and construct a fence lower than six feet to gate um, in parking lot to provide safety for the renters of the Conestoga hut. Um, an extension may be granted by the Board of Zoning Appeals. And Mr. Riggs, I guess you uh, clarified that for us. Is there anything else you would like to add? Thanks, Mr. Chair. Yeah, we really what we're talking about is a temporary dwelling structure. We don't have the ability to do that in our existing code. Um, so what we look at, uh, look to you uh, is to decide if we should be able to do that. Actually, the code says that you can do it for 60 days, but anything more than that, we can do That's it. correct, yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, do we have an appellant? If so, please uh, state your name and your address and your case. Hi. I'm, can you hear me? Yes. I'm Ginger Schmallenberg. I'm the executive director of Athens Mental Health, um, known as The Gathering Place. And we also own, we're at 7 North Congress Street, but we also own the parking lot at 1 and 5 North Congress. And we also own 34 West Washington, which is our recovery house for men. So basically, um, I guess you probably all read my my case, my appeal, what we're really looking to do is homelessness is such an issue in our community. I know we all know that. And so I've been talking with a lot of different individuals about this for some time. My board, my house board members, my community board members, we've actually been looking at this project for about two years. And I have been working with um, the folks in Eugene, Oregon, community shelters who actually started this project and it's very successful in their community. Also, it's going on in Portland, quite a few other progressive communities out in the Pacific Northwest. Um, and so what we really want to do, we're trying, we want to get our community on board with these micro shelters because we do serve a large homeless population. And it just came to our attention that every October we're handing out tents, we're handing out sleeping bags, and we're basically telling people where to hide, you know, and we really believe that the homeless shouldn't be hidden anymore. And that instead we should be focusing on, you know, our organization we should be following our mission and we should actually be focusing on how do we uplift people. And um, I have discussed this with the mayor, different city council members, um, the Athens Homeless Coalition. I have support from them. I have a letter from um, my sister's place, Kelly Cook, who is the president of the Athens Coalition, um, a lot of other agencies, 317 board. Everyone's very interested in seeing this move forward. Um, I've talked to our neighbors that we're surrounded by. Guy Phillips owns a property that's actually just across from our parking lot. And he's like, how can I support this? Um, so what we just want to do, <laughs> we just want to build one because we want to bring um, attention to this in our community. And, and they literally take three days to build, about two people, and then they're built in different pieces, parts, and then they're put together on site. So they're not meant to be permanent structures at all. And they actually are very neat and tidy looking um, we just want to show people like what this could be. Um, the mayor's actually suggested some other sites in Athens city that are underutilized in the city that we could actually probably put them on. But what we're trying to do, since we are in the heart of Athens, um, we want to get some publicity on it. We want to be able to invite other community members in to view these and see what a really great thing this could be for individuals. Um, because we only have one homeless shelter and it literally can only hold about 12 people. 
Um, and some of those are like families. And so people will be on a waiting list for getting into Timothy House in the wintertime for a very long time. And they're sleeping outside or they're breaking into sheds at Lowe's and hiding in them. You know what I mean? And so, and it's just, these individuals are having to use the restroom outside. They're littering outside. Why not make it? And, and, and like, we're just trying to be a lead on a project to show our community. This is what we all, we all, these are community members that we're talking about. Um, the pandemic has really started to cause even more hardships for individuals. Um, if individuals that are homeless do become ill, um, they really cannot um, quarantine any place. And what's so great about these structures is that they're warm. You know, it doesn't really take much to heat them. They can be insulated. Um, they have bed platforms. People can actually stay warm and dry. They can lock it while they're maybe looking for work or maybe they're getting into services with Hopewell and integrated services. Um, many individuals that are homeless in our community, they sometimes don't get into services because it's a lot of work to just try to maintain yourselves keeping yourself warm and dry they don't have they don't go to appointments but if they had a place that they could keep their stuff they're afraid of losing their stuff or someone stealing it um so that's pretty much my appeal i think it would be a really great thing to build it on our um parking lot um we are going to be putting a fence on one side which is just to actually protect our renters that we rent to we actually rent to um, like 911, we rent to Donkey, um, other community members, and then half the parking lot is ours. So we'd be putting this kind of stove hut on that parking lot. Um, so do you have any questions? Do you guys want to see pictures? Did you look at the pictures? Or We saw the pictures, but do you have any picture of the inside? We do. If you let me share my screen. Hold on. Uh, yes. okay. I might want to get one for myself. Yeah, well, I know, right? Okay, so let me... Sort of in the doghouse, right? right? No, just put him in the backyard, you know, get away from the wife for a while. <laughs> oh. Let me get the inside of one. Oh, here's a good image. Okay, so just bear with me for a second. Can you... And I'm going to open this up. Can you see that? Yep. So you can tell that they have, like, you can build these platforms... And so they're going to, and we can actually get a bed and there are special beds. They're like um, beds that kind of a person might use at camp. They're waterproof. They're bug proof. Um, individuals can actually have a window. There's storage underneath the bed. Um, they could even have a chair. They could have like a little, um, like a small little like cubby space where they could actually store some clothes or have a clock radio, things like that. So that's what it's me. Yes. How come? How come I can't see it? I, I can't. See, I can't see it either. <laughs> I can I, see the the desktop or whatever. Yeah, if uh, you open those pictures, then we can yeah, see. You got to open it. it. It is open. Okay, hold on for a second. Hold it on. might be behind or something. It might be. Maybe you're sharing the wrong window. Maybe. Yeah. Hold on for a second. Um, sorry that you have to see my messy desktop. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna. Maybe if I open it like this and now, can you guys see that? No. See my new no I believe you're just, uh, you've chosen the wrong window. You have to open the picture and then choose that picture to share. Oh, okay. We could see that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So sorry about that. Um, so yeah, so there's the bed, there's like a nightstand there's a window and that's really nice to have actually to have light and then doors that lock and there's even like a little porch that's covered and so it's, it's taking off the um the conestoga wagons like when the pioneers had conestoga wagons and so that's kind of where the terminology is coming in but they have found there's like been some really great evidence-based research on um conestoga hut villages because actually a lot of churches and communities get on board to sponsor two to four in their parking lots um, businesses even, and people put in porta johns, you know, and, and some of them are fenced in because you really actually want to protect people who are homeless, you know, okay. especially if they would be living something like this. Um, but you saw the outsides of them as well. Um, hold on, let me just look at one more so you can kind of see what a community looks like. Okay, so let me see. I can open this one up. Uh, it's kind of small. Can you see that? Yeah, we have that picture, yeah. Well, you guys have that one. Okay. Well, 
Well, my question is that you only put one person per unit? Right. Yes, only and one person. Mm -hmm. And then uh, you're going to put one unit on the parking lot, right? Okay. Only one. What we're trying to do, it's a prototype. We're not trying to have anyone live in it right now. Okay, okay. okay. We're just trying to use it as like a tour it, okay. to show people that might be interested because there's a lot of different business owners and construction um, companies that would like to build them okay. you know, for the homeless. So um, we've been doing a lot of background getting um, buy into this for a while with agencies. And so we're just now approaching like, Hey, because that's the mayor suggested that we build one to have it at stand down this year at the fairgrounds. But unfortunately that really didn't happen like, normal um and so we're like well gosh let's build one here and then we can actually let other agencies come and look at them other stakeholders in our community so no so it's not but you know it's not always a bad thing if there's just one you know it just depends on what a community's needs are right yeah. what's great about these is that if someone would come to the gathering place or go to timothy house and they needed shelter that night you know let's just say that this has happened right we're looking okay. at they would be able to go into something like this immediately, right? Okay. Not have to wait. And, and then you start dealing with making sure they're in programming, um, you know, and they're, you know, like sober, sober living. Okay. So, so you're going to have only one model, not like we're five. We're going to have yeah. one model, right? Oh, okay. okay. One model fits all. <laughs> Any questions from the board members? How many more would she be able to get on the parking lot? Just out of curiosity. Um, if we stopped renting, I mean, eventually, like this parking lot, like it, let's say it goes well and people are really into it. Let's say the program is successful in other sites. I just think we're a perfect site for it because we have access to a shower and laundry room. We're open 68 hours a week when we're not in the pandemic. Um, we actually have a um, peer recovery supporter that lives on site at Mike's Bridge House. And we are camera, we are wired all around our houses. So there's cameras everywhere. Uh, the police actually come to us when certain things happen. They want to look at our cameras because we catch a lot of things going on. Um, but we could probably, if we stopped renting our parking lot and just use it for a Conestoga hut, gosh, we could easily get about, I think that comfortable, that we would feel comfortable, um, probably six to eight. Yeah. I so mean, if everything is, so if everything worked out, ma'am, Yes. So say, say this was a success. Say it yes. was received well by the community. Yes. Is this something that you would want to do with this parking lot? Are you, if, if the one is good, would you long-term be interested in this space of doing six to eight? Is that the long-term plan? Well, um, do you know about our mission? Do you know our mission, what our mission is? Sure. Do you? I'm just curious if you know what our mission is. Yes, ma'am. Oh, okay. Jill Joe, tell me. I want to know what it is. <laughs> okay. well, I'm, not, I'm not quoting it. Let the lady, let the lady okay. say it. She, no, she, she's more that eloquent that than me. It is our mission to work with individuals from our community that have um, a mental health disorder or a co-occurring substance use disorder. And really part of that is housing. Um, that's really oftentimes the first step to getting someone into treatment, getting someone to actually... Um, seek out other recovery supports and so of course having conestoga huts is definitely our mission absolutely okay uh, just a side question uh, what um what kind of a numbers are we talking in athens or athens county i mean is it increasing reducing what, what is, smallest people there are? is that what you're asking what the numbers are yeah i mean roughly you know is it uh it, you know, it really, really is like every stand down, they're supposed to do a count and then it takes a while to get their whatever. But I would say it's really weird when you say county. If you, if city and county are very different in Athens. Right. But I would say, and, and some people too that are homeless, they're living in their cars. Okay, so that's happening a lot. Or people mm -hmm. are kind of like couch surfing and it's like they take turns maybe staying in relatives' homes or something like that. Or they kind of sometimes will just sleep on houses that look deserted, like their porches. Mm -hmm. I would say easy in Athens County that we have a, over a hundred homeless, I would say. Okay. Mm. You know, I probably mm. just alone serve last year, we served 171 individuals at the gathering place. And I think I probably served about 35 homeless individuals. And so not everyone that's homeless comes to the gathering place. Yeah. 
So well, thank you. That's uh, I didn't know that. Um, any other questions for the appellant? Okay. Um, I don't know if you have anyone who wants to speak in favor of the proposal or in general commentary or opposition. If you're online. We have one person. I'm going to let in. Uh, looks like Michelle. Okay. Uh, please unmute yourself. State your name and your address for the records. Okay. Hi there, everyone. Michelle Pappy here. Oh, Michelle. Yes. Hi. How are you? Hi. I'm good. Um, I'm the chair of the board of The Gathering Place in Athens Mental Health, Inc. And uh, obviously in full support of this project, it has been part of our mission um, to help um, some of the um, people that we serve at The Gathering Place and at Mike's Bridge House. And uh, for many of you, you know that uh, you do see remnants of um, either homeless people, you know, out in the woods or other places in town under our bridges and all of this. And this is something that Ginger is very passionate about as our director because she is in daily contact with folks like this. So with the support and the encouragement of, um, you know, the mayor, some city council folks, uh, county commissioners, um, because Ginger talks to all these people on a regular basis. Um, you know, we thought let's move forward and see if we can put this prototype on our parking lot and let the community members see it and, and go from there. And maybe it'll become a bigger, a bigger project. So I'm really hoping that the board this evening um, takes that into consideration. And it was good that you asked about the numbers in the community Mr. Golsey, because I think that really kind of uh, highlights the need. So thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. I, I had no idea it would be that much. Um, and don't you miss being on the zoning board? <laughs> Little PTSD listening to some of this tonight, folks. <laughs> okay. Uh, all right. Thank you, Michelle. Um, any other questions from the board members? Um, Mr. Riggs, I don't think we have to go through the findings. There's like five items that I need to maybe read. Am I correct? Yes, that's correct. We're okay. only talking about one, um, one uh, structure here. Yeah, pilot right. Project. Uh, so basically, uh, this part requires that we inform the appellant that the BZA may uh, permit the temporary use of a structure or premises in any zone for a a purpose that, that does not conform to the regulations prescribed elsewhere in the zoning code for the zone in which it is located. And the other thing is that the, the permit would be for 12 months, and then uh, it could be renewed uh, by the board uh, for additional one year, or after that, for me, one more time for additional, the total of maybe three years. And then uh, the permit is revocable. Upon application by any aggrieved person, the BZA may revoke a temporary permit and require the discontinuance of the use within the term of the permit or of an extension of the permit if it finds that the temporary use is causing or is likely to cause substantial detriment to the public. So I just wanted to read that for your information. Okay. No, I appreciate you listening to my spiel. <laughs> yeah, uh, it probably, it, it just probably won't happen, but you know, if there is a lot of complaints about uh, the board has that option to revoke the permit. I'm not complaining about how we are just, <laughs> how the, you have no idea. Like right now I'm here on Southern North Congress street and it's night and I can hear parties going on like everywhere. So it's like, yeah. it, no complaints going on with that. Thinking we're not going to complain about a come to the hut. <laughs> okay. Thank you. With that, we are going to directly to voting unless anyone else has any other comments. I do have somebody else in the chat, raise their hand. Okay. We'll, we'll, we'll listen to that. Um, in the chat, could you read it for me? I don't know where the chat is. 
I'm sorry, just in the attendee list. Attendees list, okay. Um, yeah, go ahead, whoever it is, and uh, uh, please uh, state your name and your address and unmute yourself if you're muted. Hello, my name's David, and I live at 4 I Cardinal Lane. Hi, Ginger. Hi, David. I'm in full support of Ginger and I do for a Conestoga hut. I think it will help immensely and it will give people who need a place to stay temporarily a place to stay so they're not out in the cold. Thank you, David. Appreciate it. Uh, um, thank you, David. Uh, thank you, Drew. Yeah, thanks for attending. Um, let's go to Lisa. Unmute, please. Lisa, I can't hear Lisa? you. Me? Yeah. What vote. do you want me to do? Oh, just yes. vote. I, yes. I vote no? yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, John? Yes. Joe? I vote yes. Okay. Show your finger up. Okay, good. And I vote yes as well. Uh, you will have the permit and the code office will issue the permit for 12 months. Thank you. It might be moved to someplace by then, but that's good. <laughs> okay. Okay. That's fine. Thank you, Jenna. And then uh, we're going to, I was hoping to do this under two hours, but we have one more case. <laughs> and that would be the case number five, case 20-14V. The property is at 286 West Union Street. Zone is B3. Athens Soil and Water Conserva Conservation uh, is the appellant. The appellant is requesting a variance from ACC 250406, ACC 250406F to allow an accessory structure, a portable enclosed carport on Athens County Fairgrounds, greater than 600 square feet, that is requesting relief from the elevation and dry flood proofing, the proofing standards and uh, does not meet the opening requirements of subsection 25.04.04E3. Uh, Mr. Ricks, could you translate that for us? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yeah, hopefully I can do this quickly and we can get out of here. Okay. Uh, and an accessory structure in the flood zone was requested that exceeds the limits of 250406 accessory structures for our floodplain. The fairgrounds area is actually a political subdivision, and they're not subject to our legal rules and regulations, which is very similar to Ohio University. Ohio University has uh, a lot of projects that they do that they don't even submit a permit for for the floodplain um, uh, administration. Um, the appellant here did not need to apply for a permit, but they did. And so what we need to do is we need to decide how to dispose of this application. We, we refused it because of uh, 250406 accessory structures. There's two parts here. There exceed 600 square feet of an accessory structure. And they're also uh, didn't have any opening requirements as were required by subsection 2504-04E3. Um, we discussed this with legal and we decided that the best way to, 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 to dispose of this was to, um, was to deny the permit and then go through the Board of Zoning Appeals uh, for, this, for this permit. So what we really need to do is look at the accessory structure, which is greater than 600 square feet, and that the opening requirements uh, uh, are not met, which is uh, 250406 accessory structures, um, F, subsection F. Okay. Sorry about no, that. No, no problem. When they say portable carport, does that mean that they store it somewhere and then they bring it up uh, when there is a need for it, or how does it work? Really what they have, and I, I would let the, uh, the appellant uh, talk about this, but okay. what they really have is a structure that they want to secure on the fairgrounds. And uh, this structure would be uh, basically a pole barn um, that they could be able to enclose it and protect whatever they have inside. Well, I saw the picture. It seemed that it's open all around. It's just like a carport. 
But yeah, uh, actually, the the proposal is not exactly that. I'll let the appellant talk about that. But uh, they actually want to enclose that so okay. they'll have a protective structure so that somebody can't come in and and you know uh, take property that they own. Okay. Uh, any questions for Mr. Riggs from the board? No. Okay. We'll let the appellant. Uh, to take the microphone and state your name and address for the records, please. Um, is there a name in? Oh, well, Kelly. Okay. Yeah, I'll go ahead and talk. My name is. Kelly Abfall, I'm um, supervisor on the for the board at so Soil and Water Conservation District. Okay. Um, and so, yeah, basically, we're putting up a, a carport, um, just like you, the, the the ones that you buy, and they're just anchored to the ground, um, a total steel structure. And we're going to um, use it to store equipment that we rent to producers around the county. Um, so that they're basically, we, it's a central location where people can come and get the rental equipment. And, and we wanted it to be at the fairgrounds, basically because we're, an agri we're, we're working with agricultural producers and that's kind of the center of the agricultural world in, in Athens County. Okay, but so this is going to be like a permanent structure. It's not going to be uh, moved back and forth from for as needed and so forth. It's just it's going to be a permanent structure. Yeah, yeah. It, it's it's not going to be poles in the ground or anything. It's just going to be anchored to the ground. But but yes, it's we're not planning on taking it to other places. We're our plan is to install a gravel pad and anchor it to that pad. Okay. Uh, any questions? Well, Mr. Alfall. Okay, thank you, sir. Um, is there anyone would like to speak in favor of the uh, variance in general comments or in opposition? No? Okay, we close the discussions from the floor. Uh, anybody? On? I Maybe. Close. From ACC 250406, ACC 250406, to allow an accessory structure, portable enclosed carport on Athens County Fairgrounds greater than 600 square feet that is requesting relief from the elevation and dry flood proofing standards and does not meet the opening requirements of subsection 2504E3. Do we have a second? I'll second it. Okay, Joe, second. Okay, uh, basically, I'm just uh, a special circumstances applies because this is a fair ground. It's not in a similar law. And we are talking about 800 square feet versus 600, and that's sort of a minimum. Uh, difficulty would apply to and not being able to utilize the, to restore their space and preserve does not apply in here is not of a nature that is not of a general nature so if we could to skip all the rules and just um, that would be a quick resolution okay yes yeah okay just okay. vote uh, here with uh k She says yes. Okay. Are you sure? <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Lisa? Yes. Yes. And Joe, I am guessing you're going to say yes. I am going to say yes. yes. Okay. I, I didn't want to talk. 
I would vote yes as well, and the variance is granted. We have one tiny more disposition of the minutes from August 11, 2020. Um, the second. A second. A second. Um, and I guess this is it.